नमस्कार वोम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज वेब हव ज्योतना श्रीवास्तव एंड विद मी इज आर एस रघु ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस External Affairs Minister of India begins 5-day visit to the United States of America. India's COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 88.7%. WHO revises targets for vaccinating world's poorest countries at the 74th World Health Assembly. Former Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi appears in court over illegal communication equipment procurement charges. India tracks its highest ever total FDI inflow of 81.72 billion dollars during last financial year and India and Israel sign a 3 year work program for cooperation in agriculture. As the number of covid cases is on the rise we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard follow all the precautions and all those who have taken the first dose of covid-19 vaccine to get vaccinated with the second dose at the scheduled time stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail China is planning to extend its controversial CPEC project to regional countries including Afghanistan. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Shao Lijian today said that China is having discussions with third parties including Afghanistan on the extension of the CPEC. The two sides are having consultations through diplomatic challenges. India has repeatedly registered its protests over CPEC, the flagship project of China's Belt and Road Initiative (BRI), saying it is in violation of its sovereignty as it passes through the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir (POK) Indian territory illegally occupied by Pakistan. Disregarding India's protests, China has been defending the USD 60 billion CPEC project, saying it is an economic project not aimed at any third party. Chinese spokesperson said that CPEC is an economic initiative with objectives of enhancing regional connectivity and achieving common development. Responding to a question by Prasad Bharti on how China sees regional prosperity being furthered by the CPEC in view of India's position that it passes through Indian territory illegally occupied by Pakistan, he said it is not about territorial disputes and does not affect our principal position on the issue of Kashmir. He added the CPEC is an economic initiative that targets no third country. The massive infrastructure project connects China Xinjiang province with Gwadar port in Pakistan Balochistan which has raised concerns of huge Chinese debt on Pakistan's fledgling economy though China has recently played down the debt concerns experts said that as Pakistan is unable to pay back the loans CPEC debt may be written off for unspecified favors Pakistan has recently availed G20's debt service suspension initiative as per reports Pakistan recently took 1 billion USD commercial loans from China to repay soft loan to Saudi Arabia Ishman Mishra for World News All India Radio Beijing Former State Councilor of Myanmar Aung San Suu Kyi appeared in court in the capital city of Nho Phi Tho on Monday in person for the first time since the military took over power from the civilian government on the 1st of February Suchi is facing charges ranging from illegally procuring communication equipment to violating state secrets law punishable by 14 years in prison. According to reports the Myanmar military appointed election commission has decided to dissolve the National League for Democracy NLD on the charges that it won the November 8th election last year based on fraud. Meanwhile local media reported that protests took place in several towns like Moniva a Sagai region in Myanmar on Monday against the military government. Following the military takeover of the government some estimates say that at least 818 people have been killed in protests against the government in Myanmar. External Affairs Minister of India Dr S Jay Shankar reached New York on Monday on a 5 day visit to the United States. In New York, the Washington DC, the external affairs minister will hold discussions with his US counterpart Anthony Blinken. He will also meet cabinet ministers and senior officials of Biden administration dealing with bilateral relationship. 
Dr. Jay Shankar will have two interactions with business forums on economic and COVID related cooperation between India and the US. The Union Health Ministry has said that the country is witnessing continuous decline in the number of active cases of COVID-19 and further improvement in the recovery from the infection in the past 22 days. Addressing the media, Joint Secretary in the Health Ministry, Lava Agarwal, said that the number of active cases has now come down to 10.17% from the level of 17.13% while the recovery rate has improved to 88.7% from the level of 81.7% on 3rd of May. He informed that in the last 14 days, the country has reported a decline of 10 lakh active cases and now it stood at the level of 27.2 lakh. During the briefing, Director Ames New Delhi, Dr. Randeep Guleria said, labeling the same fungus with names of different colors can create confusion. He said, mucormycosis or fungal infection is not a communicable disease, unlike COVID. He said, 90 to 95 percent of patients getting infected with this kind of fungal infection are found to have been either diabetic or taking steroids. He said, as the recovery rate is increasing, there is also a need to develop multidisciplinary post-COVID clinics for the rehabilitation and management of post-COVID patients as they may continue with some symptoms for few weeks after the recovery. In reply to a question, Dr. Guleria said that there is no indication that the third wave of COVID will infect children severely. More than 19 crude 60 lakh vaccine doses have been administered to beneficiaries in India till now. The health ministry said the country has reported 2,22,000 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of cases to over 2 crude 67 lakh. Meanwhile, the government of India has decided to provide the facility of on-site registration and facilitate cohort registration on COVID digital platform for people in the age group of 18 to 44 years. This facility will only be available at Government COVID Vaccination Centers, CVCs. It will not be available for private CVCs and they will have to publish their vaccination schedules exclusively with slots for online appointments. However, the on-site registration will be enabled in case of sessions exclusively organized with online slots towards the end of the day to minimize vaccine wastage. Now let's take a look at the coronavirus updates from around the world. WHO sets new targets for vaccinating the world's poorest countries to end what are described as a scandalous inequity in vaccine distribution. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus warned that no country should assume that it's out of the woods, no matter its vaccination rate, as long as the SARS-CoV-2 virus and its variants spread elsewhere. Speaking at the opening of the annual assembly of health ministers from its 194 member states, Dr. Tedro said, the world remains in a very dangerous situation and more cases have been reported so far this year than in the whole of 2020. Dr. Tedro said the COVAX facility run by WHO and the Gavi Vaccine Alliance has delivered 72 million vaccine doses to 125 countries and economies since February, barely sufficient for 1% of their populations. He urged countries to donate vaccine doses to COVAX to enable 10% of the populations of all countries to be inoculated by September and 30% by the year end. He said this meant vaccinating 250 million more people in just four months. Dr. Tedros also called on vaccine manufacturers to give COVAX the first right of refusal on new volumes of vaccines or to commit 50% of their volumes to COVAX this year. French President Emmanuel Macron called for the WHO to be empowered to visit countries rapidly in case of outbreaks with potential to spark a pandemic and act to access the data. Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel in separate pre-recorded remarks to the Assembly called for the UN agency's funding to be improved and backed the idea of a new international treaty to prevent pandemics. Meanwhile, Japan kicks off a mass vaccination program in Tokyo and Osaka as the COVID crisis worsens over there. The military has set up centers offering thousands of shots each day. 
They are prioritizing the elderly. The country's vaccination drive started late and was hampered by supply shortages and organizational hurdles. As a result, Japan is lagging significantly behind other developed nations. Only about 1.9% of the population is fully vaccinated. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. The Meteorological Department of Bangladesh has asked the maritime ports of Chattogram, Cox's Bazar, Mongla and Para to hoist the distant warning signal too in view of the deep depression over East Central Bay and adjoining areas to north, northwestwards intensifying into a cyclonic storm named Yas. The government of Bangladesh is preparing to face the cyclone when it is likely to hit the coast by May 26th. More from our Prasar Bharati special correspondent in Dhaka. All preparations are in place to deal with the cyclone Yas if it hits Bangladesh coast. State Minister for Disaster Management and Relief, Inamur Rahman, has said that local administration, police and volunteers are ready on the ground to help people during the cyclone. The minister said that the risk of the cyclone Yas hitting Bangladesh coast is quite low, yet the government is keeping a close watch on the situation. In the Chattogram, over 500 cyclone shelters have already been set up. The local administration has prepared a sufficient number of cyclone shelters and formed medical teams to deal with the situation arising out of the cyclone. Meanwhile, the Bangladesh Med Department has said that Cyclone Yas has remained stationary over the same area over 600 kilometers from maritime ports of Chattogram, Mongla, Cox's Bazar and Paira ports. It may reach the North Odisha, West Bengal, Khulna coast of Bangladesh by 26 May early morning. The Med Department has asked the maritime ports to wise distant warning signal 2 in view of the likelihood of the cyclone Yas intensifying further due to favorable atmospheric conditions. All fishing boats and trawlers over North Bay and Deep Sea have been advised to remain close to the coast and not venture deep into the sea. Rajesh Jha, World News, All India Radio, Dhaka. The cyclonic storm Yas is very likely to move slowly north-northwestwards, intensifying further into a severe cyclonic storm during the next 12 hours and into a very severe cyclonic storm during the subsequent 24 hours. It would continue to intensify further and reach northwest bay of Bengal near North Odisha and West Bengal coasts by early morning on Wednesday. It is very likely to cross North Odisha, West Bengal coasts between Paradeep and Sagar Islands around Wednesday noon as a very severe cyclonic storm. In today's hotspot section, we are taking a closer look at the preparations underway towards Cyclone Yas. In conversation are Dr. Mithunjay Mahapatra, Director General of Meteorology, India Meteorological Department and Ruchika Chitravanshi, Journalist. It was a week ago that the powerful cyclone Tokte hit the parts of India and we are still struggling with it. And now there is news of another strong cyclone that is on its way. This time it is heading towards the eastern ghat. It is called Cyclone Yas, which is expected to intensify into the cyclone today and reach Bengal, Odisha, and other coastal areas of eastern India sometime on Wednesday. We are joined by Dr. Mithunjay Mohapatra from IMD. Sir, can you tell us a little bit about the cyclone Yas? What are the areas that need to be concerned and how severe is this cyclone going to be? Cyclone Yas is now located about uh, 500 kilometers south southeast of Paradis uh, and 600 kilometers south southeast of Balasore. It is expected to move north northwestwards and intensify into a very severe cyclone storm gradually by tomorrow evening. It will continue to move north northwestwards and cross North Odisha and adjoining West Bengal coast between Paradis and Sagar Islands around Balasore during noon of 26 May. At the time of landfall, it will have the wind speed of about 155 to 165 km per hour, gusting to 185 km per hour. 
this is a very large scale damaging wind it can lead to uprooting of big trees uprooting and bending or breaking of electric poles and telephone poles it can have large scale damage on pakka houses in houses as just as houses even sometimes the old pakka houses can be affected it can also affect the railway traffic surface transport and air traffic over the sea it is highly disturbed conditions so entire shipping operation fishing operation marine operations are suspended to remain suspended till 26 and in association with this um, cyclone we are also expecting heavy to extremely heavy rainfall already rainfall has started over coastal areas of odisha it will gradually intensify and we are expecting heavy to heavy rain for our coastal districts of odisha and west bengal on 25th and it will further increase on 26th with heavy to very heavy rain fall and extremely heavy rain fall that is rain fall exceeding 20 cm in 24 hours is expected over north odisha districts and also the districts of gangetic west bengal on 26th after crossing the coast the cyclone will move north north westwards across mayurbhanj towards southeast jharkhand jamshedpur area and gradually weaken therefore under its influence interior districts of west bengal north odisha and jharkhand south jharkhand specially we will have the gale state for some time in the night of 26 and it will gradually decrease towards morning of 27 so interior districts also can have the partial damage in terms of uprooting of trees and damage to electric and power communications and also affected houses small houses etc we have the slums small towns uh, in this area cities also so there can be inundation in low lying areas in the city and also in the coastal districts because of this heavy to extremely heavy rainfall we can also expect the storm surge that is the tidal wave um, above the astronomical tide of 2 to 4 meter high can inundate low lying areas of balasor Bhadrak, Kendrapara, and the rest of the districts of Odisha and Medinipur and 24 Pargana districts of West Bengal. So at a time you will have the three types of multi-hazard scenario in terms of the heavy rainfall, storm surges, and also the winds. So therefore there will be need for evacuation. We have advised for evacuation, and some state governments are taking steps to evacuate people from low-lying areas. So. i will suggest that we have given the advice that complete suspension of fishing operation shipping operation the operations along the coast with industries and ports etc needs to be regulated and people should move to the safe areas from the low lying areas and unsafe areas they should remain in the safe area or the shelters as long as there is threat due to cyclone they should listen to the official warnings they should not believe in rumor they should not spread rumors cooperate with concerned state and central agencies for meeting this challenge due to the disaster like cyclone so you are saying this is going to be like wind speeds are over 150 km per hour and you also said that how evacuation needs to happen in the low lying areas and complete suspension of uh, fishing activities shipping activities any lessons from the cyclone talk day because we did see some tragedy happen there that a ship was uh, stranded and there was a whole search for survivors happening any learnings from talk day and how do you compare cyclone yas to our experience with the uh, talk day the maximum intensity of uh, cyclone yas which we are predicting is 155 to 165 km per hour and uh, it is comparable to cyclone tsili which crossed um, extreme northern part of andhra pradesh and southern part of odisha in 2018 and also it will have slightly less intensity compared to cyclone ampan which crossed west bengal last year on 20th of may but whenever the wind speed reaches around 150 km per hour the impact in terms of the damage to the structures will be almost same as that is occurred in tauti or in ampan or tikli with respect to the tragedy which happened in case of arabian sea I just want to mention that in every cyclone, India Meteorological Department provides warnings with respect to marine operations. We provide various types of warnings specifically for various users. For example, we have got the fisherman warning. We have got the warning for fishery officials. We have got the warning for coastal 
shipping, called as coastal weather bulletin. For deep sea area shipping, we have sea area bulletin. We also issue a global maritime distress safety system bulletin for the international shipping. So the special bulletins for the port authorities along the coasts. So all these bulletins are also continued. In addition to that, there was high-level meeting conducted by Honorable Prime Minister, followed by Honorable Home Minister, and also Cabinet Secretary. And there is the highest level of uh, importance being given to the management of this uh, cyclone, and specific care has been taken with respect to the marine activity or offshore activities. Have you also been updated about the evacuation exercises? Has all the warnings of IMD that has come well in time, actually, are they being heeded? There is also the monitoring and cooperation among all agencies at state and center. At the state level, Honorable Chief Ministers are monitoring the situation and also by the Honorable Chief Secretaries. So all are working together, the National Disaster Management Response Force, State Disaster Response Force, and state agencies, central agencies, Indian Navy, Defense, and Indian Coast Guards, uh, and early warning agencies like IMD, INPAES, and many others. All are working together. To provide. So. How surprised are you uh, with the occurrence of this cyclone and back to back uh, to such cyclones? What is causing them? The month of May is prone for tropical cyclone activity in Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. If you see the cyclones develop in two seasons, one is April, May, and June, other one is October, November, December. In the month of uh, October, November, December, the frequency is uh, relatively high, about uh, two to three cyclones develop. In the month of April, May, June, usually we get one or two cyclones. So, accordingly, we are getting these two cyclones. But back to back occurrence of cyclones are not new in this process. Earlier also, it has occurred like this, uh, one after another, within a span of one week. And also, there has been simultaneous occurrence of cyclones. For example, if you consider in 2018, Tithli and Luwan, Tithli occurred in Bay of Bengal, Luwan occurred in Arabian Sea. If you consider only Arabian Sea, Kyar and Maha in 2019 occurred simultaneously. There has been cyclone one after another. In 1999, two cyclones within a week, uh, they traveled, Genesis took place in Bay of Bengal, one crossed Gopalpur in 18th of October, then in 29th October, super cyclone crossed uh, near Paradis. So there are cases in that area. This can be termed as a super cyclone? No, the maximum intensity we are expecting in this case is a very severe cyclone storm. It is not expected to be extremely severe or super cyclone. And uh, does it have anything to do with environmental changes, global warming? What factor does that play? Certainly, there are uh, certain impacts of the global warming or climate change uh, on the particular cyclone intensity, especially. There has been a global study. I am a member of the International Committee for Study of Impact of Climate Change and the Cyclones. So we analyzed uh, the various ocean basins, including Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. What we found, actually, the intensity of the cyclones to Arabian Sea has increased in recent years. That means the number of intense cyclones over the Arabian Sea is for an increasing trend since 1990. Then we analyzed whether it is because of the climate change or not, whether we can attribute it, we found that, yes, there is a low confidence by which we can attribute this change in intense cyclone frequency over Arabian Sea to the climate change. Over the Bay of Bengal, we found that there is no significant change in the frequency of intense cyclones, like very severe cyclones or extreme severe cyclones. And um, however, we found that the cyclones are moving slowly nowadays while crossing the coast. So if a cyclone moves slowly, then it will have the residency period over the land for more time, and hence it can cause more damage. And what is the impact going to be in other parts of the country? Are there weather warnings that you are giving for other parts of the country also, which are away from where the cyclone is hitting? Direct impact on West Bengal and Odisha, there could be the heavy rain in North Andhra Pradesh today and tomorrow. We can expect heavy rainfall over Assam, Meghalaya, and Southern and West Bengal city on 26th and 27th. Jharkhand will have heavy to extremely heavy rainfall activity on 26th and 27th, and Bihar also can experience uh, heavy to heavy rainfall activity on 27th. So also IMD is an agency that many other neighboring countries of India also uh, depend upon and seek advice from. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have told uh, some of the other countries about this cyclone? IMD acts as a regional specialized meteorological center for particular cyclones. Is one of the six centers uh, in the world. It is mandated to provide the tropical cyclone advisories to all the countries in Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea region. So, accordingly, with this cyclone, 
we are providing information to bangladesh even i talked today to the bangladesh meteorological department there is close coordination information is being provided to them so when uh, south east cyclone is coming over arabian sea so we also shared our information to all the member countries of this wmsk panel uh, especially the sri lanka maldives and uh, pakistan oman yemen iran qatar saudi arabia uae all these countries also got our information because there are many activities over arabian sea by all these countries and uh, we provide them advisory agent when the cyclone develops over this region can you give us an outlook now after cyclone yas are you seeing a period of uh, peace and quiet or are you expecting more such uh, activity in our sea at least for next 7 days we are not expecting any other development uh, like uh, tropical disturbances over the bay of bengal or the arabian sea so dr mopat i'm curious uh, like as a scientist also how far in the future can you actually see and predict people also would like to know there are two types of predictions one is uh, short to medium range prediction which we provide a gj about the likely genesis of and that is valid for up to 5 to 7 days and every thursday we provide an extended range outlook which is valid for next two weeks so during this two weeks period likely to average of genesis of cyclones also provided this is coming at a time when india and the whole world is battling with the pandemic how challenging is it for imd to function and to do all of the things that you do amid a pandemic what are the specific challenges that you have faced it is really very challenging for india meteorological department to manage during this covid period because we are also maintaining covid appropriate behavior that is work from home principle and people have also some kind of um, fear in their mind and that people do not like to come to the workplace and uh, we have to motivate them but i am very happy to inform you that uh, imd people rise to the occasion and during the cyclone period all are cooperating and round the clock watch is being maintained all observations are being taken including uh, observations from the ground observations from the air and observations from utilizing the radar and also we are running all the numerical observation models uh, data exchange and computing systems so that timely informations are generated and all the warnings are being communicated for various stakeholders and specific users without any fail thank you so much uh, dr mohapatra for joining us we know all about cyclone yas now and very timely advice and warning coming from IMD for the states that are likely to be affected by this cyclone thank you so much dr mohapatra for your time thank you india and israel have signed a three year work program for cooperation in agriculture india and israel are implementing the indo israel agricultural project centers of excellence and indo israel villages of excellence speaking on the occasion agriculture and farmers welfare minister narendra singh tomar said india and israel have had bilateral relations since 1993 in the agricultural sector and this is the fifth action plan india has attracted its highest ever total foreign direct investment fdi inflow of 81.72 billion dollars during the last financial year commerce and industry ministry said it is 10% higher as compared to 2019-20 fdi equity inflow also grew by 19% in last financial year compared to 2019-20 at the domestic stock market key indices ended with marginal gains but the rupee weakened slightly against the us dollar in the international markets brent crude oil prices rose sharply towards 68 dollars a barrel And quickly to add the headlines once again external affairs minister of india begins five day visit to united states of america india's covid-19 recovery rate improves to 88.7% who revises targets for vaccinating world's poorest countries at the 74th world health assembly former myanmar state councilor ong san suu kyi appears in court over illegal communication equipment procurement charges india tracks its highest ever total fdi inflow of 81.72 billion dollars during the last financial year and india and israel sign a three year work program for cooperation in agriculture india is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi before we end let us listen to his favorite bhajan vaishnav jan by artists from south africa vaishnav jan do tene kai hai je peed par aaye jaane re par dukhe upkar kare 
with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.